So when most people are using Rewire, I think the biggest mix misconception that comes up is that when you have your host open, let's say like Logic or Live or Cubase, and you look and you see on your Rewire ports, you'll see Rewire Reason 1 and 2, which says left and right, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people get misconfused that that actually means channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, channel 5 right here on the mixer, and that's not actually what's going on. This mixer has nothing to do with Rewire. Rewire are these up here at the top, the audio outputs that are at the top, the hardware device. So in order for you to get something to outputs 2 or 3 or 4, you actually have to take the device, remove it from the mixer, and wire it up to the hardware output. That's great, but then what happens if you had some automation on the mixer? What if there was something in your song where you did something to change that sound on the mixer? Maybe you had an effect send or return or some EQ or maybe some level changes. That gets lost because now you're going directly out of the device into rewire. So everything that you've done here, all the automation goes away. It's problematic. When you use record, if I have the devices, and we'll just do this now, I'll just disconnect. So now nothing's connected to the mixer. And now what I'm gonna do is go to the first device and click all the way down to the last device in the chain. Right click and go to auto route device. And I will now get separate mixer channels for all of my parts inside of record. So now each device is in its own record mixer channel. Now the benefit of using record for rewire is that when you look on these mix channels, see each one of the devices gets its own sort of mix channel device. If you look right here where it says direct out, what that allows you to do is take this bass sound, keep everything that's on the channel, any EQing, any compression, any effects, any of that stuff that's there gets kept and it gets removed from the main master mixer and gets fed into just the outputs. So you keep all of your settings that were there. Everything that's on this base part, all of these parameters would be retained and it would be post fader output. So rewiring becomes much, much more flexible and any automation that you had would be saved as well. And so it's much easier to do a rewire because then it'll actually be there's base and that goes out to here and everything's good saved. All right, so a little clarification. We can start to look at the back panel here and start thinking about some things that we can do. So each one of the devices, for the most part, has some sort of sequencer control input, which says gate and CV. And the most common thing you do with this is you create a matrix pattern sequencer and look, automatically the gate CV connects to the gate, the note CV connects to CV. So what's going to happen now is when I press play, <laughs> that are being sent out or a control voltage of a specific value and they're jumping from one value to the next and then the gate is right down here and that's how long it's on or whether it's being triggered and you can do things like tie them so you can make longer notes now our gate is actually a little unique because not only is it getting a on off but our gate input is also accepting velocity information so it's a little unique usually gate is just on off but our gate is gate on off plus velocity which would tell, which goes directly to the amp envelope. So it's a little unique. All right, so we've got a little re repetitive, annoying note line going. Um, let's do some fun things. Let's go over to the curve mode of the matrix. And in here, we can draw in some values. So think of this as your dimmer switch, right? And so maybe we'll have the dimmer all the way on and then dimmer all the way off. And that's our curve value. We're going to take that output, which is right here, and I'm going to connect it to something that is a most common thing, maybe the filter one frequency. These knobs right here to the left are attenuators. Um, what the attenuators do is take the value that's coming in and either give you full value or scale it back by a certain amount. So when I look over here and I've got this value all the way up, with my attenuator all the way up, that means I'm going to get the full value. If I take this attenuator and back it off a touch, then even though it's all the way up here, it's not going to fully control filter. It's going to give it a sort of a variable, it's a slight less amount. So it scales it a certain percentage. So I'm going to leave it all the way open for now. 
and we're going to give us some resonance and close our filter, and now we're going to get... Okay, so it sounds like what it looks like, right? That filter going down. Now, of course, if we draw in, going up, same thing. There's some random values in here. Alright, so standard stuff. Everyone follow me up to this point? Okay, so we've used CV to control filter resonance. Now let's have some fun. We're just using a subtractor in this example. And what I'm going to do is create a spider, audio, a spider CV merger and splitter. How many people here use the spiders? A few of you, okay. Anyone here don't understand what the heck the spiders are and why I would ever use them in my music? Okay, so let me give you a little, a little understanding of what these are. There's two different spiders. One for CV, which is control voltage, like we just talked about, which could also be gate, and another for audio. And what the spiders are, they're utility modules that allow you to take a signal and to do, do two different things with it. So when you're using the spider as a splitter, what it's going to do is take a signal, be it audio or CV or gate, and take that one signal that's coming in and allow you to split it a few different ways. So essentially making a copy of that one signal to be spread out to a bunch of different places. So instead of, let's say you wanted a kick drum and you wanted to compress it, distort it, flange it, and, and decimate it. Instead of making that same kick drum and repeating it four times in the sampler or doing four different versions of that device, just take the kick drum, run it a, through a spider audio splitter, and then take its four outputs and run them to individual effects. The merger will take any four either CV or audio signals and merge them or combine them to one output, be it stereo or mono. So they're just utilities. They're basically like malts that you would think of on, on the modular world. So it's ways that you can take information, be it audio or CV, and either split it out or merge it in. Okay, following? So using that, I'm going to take this spider audio, I mean spider CV splitter, and you know what, let me just undo that because it, it wired it up for me. So I want to create it without it actually getting connected to anything. Everyone know the old hold down shift while you're creating a device? If you do that, then your device does not get routed. It just creates it as it is, which allows you to select where you're going to route it. So what I want to do is take that curve CV and take it into the split A input. And now I'm going to hear exactly the same thing. Okay, it sounds the same. I've taken that signal and then split it and have one of those splits go to filter frequency. Now I'm going to take the INV. Anyone know what INV means? Inverted, yeah? So it's the reverse or inverse amount. So when you look at this pattern, when something's all the way up here, the inverse is going to send that same value but negative, flipped. So you can get, even though it's just one set of values, you're getting both positive and negative values out of the same signal. That's what the invert does. So I'm going to take the inverted amount and run it to oscillator one's pitch. Then I'm going to take this and run it into the, let's say, we're going to merge this plus the LFO1 and merge those into the LF FM amount. We're going to give LFO1 a bit of rate intensity, a little higher intensity. Make sure our fit is up. And give oscillator 2 something. So now what we're going to get is some pretty interesting whacked out sounds from just a subtractor. <laughs> Now using these attenuators, strange stuff. So you start to see a little bit of what's going on with CV. It really allows you to experiment. You, you probably didn't know that all this time since version one, Reason is really a modular synthesizer. Sort of in both the cheap clothes.